Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Insulation, and in today's video, we're working on this 2008 Volkswagen Jetta. Now, in this install, what we're going to be doing is replacing the factory doubled in with an aftermarket one that has built in Bluetooth, aux, USB, and more of the modern amenities of today. Uh, what we're going to do is get this on out, then we'll head over to the bench to show you what parts we need, including the dash kit and the wiring harness, and we'll get back here, get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. So, first thing we need to do is get this guy on out. Now, we actually have to take a layered approach. The top has to come out to expose screws so we can take out our vents. Then we can take out our dash bottom bezel. And then finally, the radio itself can come out. So it's kind of a pain, but take your time. Now, especially with the age and condition of the vehicle, you, we do not want to break any of these pieces. So we're going to take our sweet time to make sure we do that. Now, we have a little flathead screwdriver as well as a panel tool. Okay, perfect. So with that out of the way, has looks like two gutter clips up in the front, so we'll start in the back. With that out of the way, there's gonna be three T20 Torx screws. Gotta remove those. Okay, once those are out, this panel is very delicate. You don't want to damage it in any way. Kind of put in a screwdriver and separate the seam here. There it goes. Okay, we don't have to take it out. We can just put it up there, out of the way. Next here, this bottom panel needs to come on out. Generally, it's held in with clips. Uh, there are two screws here at the tops, also T20, but everything else are held on with clips. It's common when you take these panels off that they, the clips may stay in. So you may need to super glue or hot glue them back on before you reinstall the panel. Okay, there we go. It actually looks like most of the clips stayed in. Okay, so with that out of the way, finally now we're to the radio. Quick advisory, if you have a disk drive, which most of them do in this year, go ahead and pop all your disks out. Once the radio comes out, it'll be nearly impossible to get those disks removed. Those screws are on out. The radio should just come on out. Maybe a tight fit, but here it goes. Pull it out. Disconnect all of your harnesses here. Now this main harness has a latch. Essentially you lift this latch and it goes back and allows the harness to come free. So with the radio free at this point of time, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for our install. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna need for our install, first and foremost, is the radio that we're going with. Uh, the customer brought us this doubled in Sony. It is the DSX B700. It's a doubled in faceplate with a singled in chassis type style here. Essentially, it's a multimedia unit, doesn't have a disk drive at all. Now, to accommodate that in the factory location, we have a doubled in dash kit. Now, we're going with this Skosh VW2317AB. Um, it fits a doubled in or a singled in, depending on what you're looking to install. Now for the wiring that we're going to go with is this Crux harness, it's the SWR VW-52. It retains both steering wheel controls and vehicles that don't have them. Specifically also with this harness it retains um, all your necessary connections for an aftermarket radio being a smart harness. Now there are a couple of styles of antenna adapters, they're single and double pronged adapters. We got a single pronged, but if you need a double pronged, um, we'll link both in the description here for you. This one is an amplified style, and so one end will actually connect into the amplified circuit, where the other end will connect into our radio as well as the vehicle. So this provides a little bit more juice when using the radio. So what we're going to do is get our radio mounted up in the dash kit, 
Then we're going to grab the wiring harness that came with the radio and the harness that came with our crux and start soldering everything up color for color. All right, so at this point, we are done with the radio and dash kit. Let's turn our attention over to the wiring harness. Now we have our Sony side as well as our crux side. Essentially here, we're just gonna match color for color and solder those connection. And we'll put some heat shrink up and over those to shrink them down once those connections cool. Now if you don't know how to solder or don't have the means to do so, you can use butt connectors or even more preferably crimp caps. Um, don't use wire nuts from a home application in this type of environment they're just not designed for an automotive environment so what we're going to do is we'll get a heat shrink on and we're going to start marrying up colors getting everything soldered one by one okay so we've soldered up all our connections literally color for color here we added our amplified antenna here to just tie it into our our red accessory wire but other than that we just connected everything we're not using the reverse trigger wire because we're not doing a touchscreen radio that can display any sort of vacuum camera and we don't need the vehicle speed sense pink wire so we'll cap those on off everything else has been connected so at this point let's move our heat shrink up and over our connections we're going to shrink them down with a heat gun radio harness is all done good to go this end plugs into the vehicle this end plugs into the radio this end plugs into our antenna in the vehicle, and this end plugs into our radio. So, I've also left an amp turn on wire, just in case we had an amplifier down the road, it's nice to have that available, and the reverse gear wire out as well, just in case we add a different type of Sony down the road, we can quickly tap into that. So, at this point of time, let's head to the car and start getting everything reinstalled. All right, so back here in the vehicle, let's start getting everything reassembled. So let's plug in our wiring harness adapter. Make sure that locks down, holding everything in tight. Grab our antenna adapter. Tuck everything back behind the dash. Grab a radio. So let's get everything tucked back once we've made our connections. Just like so. Now before we button everything up, let's do a test to make sure everything's working properly. Okay, everything's working great. Turns off with the key, it's exactly what we want. So at this point of time, let's go ahead and reassemble the radio. All right, that's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching the channel. Now we do have other videos on this model year Jetta, but they're a couple years old and our technique has changed a little bit over the years. Um, if you wanna see that other version of the video, we'll link that down in the description because we also did technically a backup camera on that as well. But uh, other than that, for this install here today, we are done. Be sure to hit that like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time, and we will see you in the next video.